Hey, what's up guys? Fabio here once again. I want to welcome everybody back to another video. And today I'm going to be continuing on with the Bondathon. And now we are getting down to the very nitty gritty. We are on the last of the James Bond stuff. The last James Bond, of course, none other than Daniel Craig. And I will be talking about the 2006 version of Casino Royale, which is a remake. It was a reboot to the Bond series, and it was also a remake of the earlier version of James of Casino Royale. Excuse me. And uh, I do quite enjoy this movie. It's not. It's too long. I will say that it's definitely too long. But other than that, I think Casino Royale is a pretty solid film. But before I go any further, if anyone would like to help contribute to the channel by sending in a paid request, you may do so down below in the description box. There is a link to my PayPal account. No amount is too big. No amount is too small. It does not have to be just a movie review. It could be a TV series or a cartoon or a comic book or a video game. Music, random thoughts and discussions and rants and commentaries and anything in between. The sky is pretty much the limit when it comes to the paid requests. So if that's something that you are interested in, go ahead, click on that link, send it in, and I will get to it as soon as I possibly can. And for those that have sent them in, uh, don't worry, they are coming. I will be catching up on the paid request very soon here. I might be able to get a couple in before the month is over, but as soon as December 1st hits, it's all paid requests. So uh, if you have sent one in, I know I'm pretty backed up on them. No, have no fear, they're coming soon. And uh, if you are thinking about sending one in, again, I'm going to be hitting them pretty hard in a couple of days here, so no worries. Um, they will be they will be up very, very soon, guys. And for those that have sent them in before, thank you. I greatly appreciate it. It means you guys actually care about what I say and do here on the channel, and you want to see me try out some different things and it does motivate me to keep wanting to make videos so it's a win-win for everybody so thank you but yes we are now at the final james bond hopefully forever to be honest and uh with daniel craig and i'm going to be talking about casino royale now prior to this movie coming out there were two different versions of casino royale you had the 1957 tv movie that was the first uh, media of James Bond, other than the books. And then in 1965, I believe, 1966, somewhere around there, you had the parody film, which starred uh, Woody Allen, the fucking weirdo. And then you didn't have Casino Royale until 2006. Um, so this is not only a remake of the 1957 Casino Royale, this is a reboot of the James Bond series, which in all honesty, after Die Another Day came out, I think most people, including the diehard fans like myself, needed a break. James Bond had to go away for a while. At that point, you had 40 years of James Bond. You had, what, 20 movies at that point, and it was time for... James Bond to kind of go away for a little bit and do some other things. And then in 2006, we had this film, which again, I do quite enjoy this. I remember, of course, now, you know, from really die, or, uh, World Is Not Enough up, I remember all these movies coming out in theaters. So I remember when this came out in 06 and wanting to go see it in theaters, but I did not uh, have the opportunity to do that, unfortunately. But they decided to go for a reboot, a remake, a reimagining, whatever you want to call it, for the character of James Bond. Which again, after Die Another Day, people were tired. So I kind of get why they did it this way. They wanted to do something, you know, completely different. Well, not really completely different, but they wanted to do something different. And they wanted to give fans something different than what we had seen with James Bond. And here we are. Now, the rights to Casino Royale were owned by a different company. They were owned by Sony. Now, Sony and MGM 
I think merged. I don't know what year. I couldn't find it when I was doing research on this movie. But MGM, I think, went through uh, a period of financial difficulties and bankruptcy. And I think Sony had bought them out or Sony wanted to, you know, put some money into it or what have you. So from now on, I think all the James Bond films, yeah, they're MGM, but I think Sony has a lot to do with them. Again, please correct me if I'm wrong. But before this movie was made, before the merger or whatever happened with Fox and MGM and all that, Sony owned the rights to Casino Royale because they owned Columbia Pictures and they were the ones that did the 1957 version of Casino Royale. So in exchange for the rights to Casino Royale, MGM sold off Spider-Man, which is why Sony got Spider-Man. And then MGM, before they teamed up with Sony, got Casino Royale. So there you go. Um, and then, you know, cause they, they had always wanted to do a version of Casino Royale that was with the other Bond movies, but they would never sell the rights off. So finally they got the rights to do this, to do Casino Royale in 1999, actually right before or right around the time that the world is not enough came out. And after Die Another Day, they wanted to kind of step back and you have to realize that this is around the time that the remakes and everything started to happen. The year before Batman Begins came out, that was a big movie to lead into this. Fantastic Four, the remake of that came out the year before. So this is kind of when that started. And with James Bond, they wanted to kind of go back to the basics, go back to what it started as for a new generation or whatever. I don't know. But the thing was, you know, I know... Okay, before I go any further, I love Daniel Craig. I do quite enjoy Daniel Craig as James Bond. Um, I think, honestly, he has more movies that aren't that good than, you know, the good ones. Because, I, for me, Casino Royale and Skyfall were the best. Every, um, everything else has kind of been, eh. The next movie, eh. Spectre. Eh, I haven't seen No Time to Die, but from what I heard, eh. So, unfortunately, you know, I think he has more bad movies than good movies. But I enjoyed Daniel Craig. When he was announced as James Bond, I remember that. And I remember it was a big deal. Everybody hated it, which is weird. Because in 1989, when Michael Keaton was cast as Batman, it was people got mad about that. When Christian Bale got cast as Batman, people got mad at that. And so on and so forth. But now everybody loves Daniel Craig. So it just goes to show you people have always been stupid. Because one of the and one of the biggest complaints about Daniel Craig, he has blonde hair. Okay, so what? Who cares? Uh it's never bothered me. But I remember when Daniel Craig was announced, and I'm like, oh, he was in Tomb Raider, the first Tomb Raider. Um, and he was in some other films, but Daniel Craig wasn't really, you know, a superstar at this point. But everyone says, oh, Daniel Craig is like Bond in the books. Daniel Craig is just a killing machine, and he's serious, and this, that, and the other thing. When they completely forgot that Timothy Dalton did it first. So, Daniel Craig was not the first serious James Bond. Um, you know, Sean Connery was pretty serious. I mean, yeah, Sean Connery had moments, but Roger Moore was different, and so on and so forth. But Timothy Dalton was the first, like, from the books type of James Bond. But people just ignore that and think Daniel Craig is the only person that played James Bond. And then, of course, you have the people that hated the fact that he was cast as James Bond in the beginning and then come to love him. But I've always enjoyed Daniel Craig. Again, I think out of the four that I've seen, only two I really liked. Other than that, I don't care. So I think he's just got, you know, generic screenplays and such. So, yeah. But this one's pretty good. This is a pretty good movie. So they wanted to go ahead and reboot Bond. Pierce Brosnan, his contract was for four movies. He fulfilled his contract. He said he didn't want to do it anymore. They wanted Quentin Tarantino to direct this movie, and he said he would only do it if it took place in the 60s and Pierce Brosnan was James Bond. Clearly that didn't happen. 
they went to Martin Campbell, who did Goldeneye. Great choice. Now, other people that were considered for Bond, they wanted uh, Carl Urban, but he had a scheduling thing and he couldn't do it. Uh, Ewan McGregor auditioned for the role, but clearly he didn't get it. I think that would have been really cool if Ewan McGregor did. There were some other people. Uh, I think Goran Vizhnik auditioned. I don't know how far he got in the process, but... I love Daniel Craig. I think he's a great James Bond. Again, unfortunately, he's only done two good movies, at least in my opinion. Because Quantum Assault has a lot of issues. Spectre is okay. And then I have not seen No Time to Die yet, which I'll be watching. Today is November, Saturday, November 27th. Sunday, November 28th, I will watch it and review it for you guys and we'll be good to go. So by the time these are all done, I will have seen the movie, but not right this minute but i'll enjoy daniel craig so and they said they even said was like well batman begins rebooted batman so we're going to do that with bond i don't always agree with a remake reboot reimagining but i enjoyed this movie quite a bit i enjoy skyfall was definitely the best daniel craig one so but unfortunately he has more bad movies than good movies that's just me that's just my opinion but anyway moving on so it's pretty, the, the plot of this one, I love the beginning. I love how you see James Bond get his 00 status, get his license to kill. And I love that it's filmed in black and white. So James, they're kind of going back to the beginning, even though they bring back Judy Dench's M. I love how they did that, don't get me wrong. Even though it's not supposed to make sense, but whatever. So I guess this is a prequel somewhat. I don't know. I, I count the Daniel Craig movies as their own thing. Every, from Dr. No to Never or Die Another Day, that's the original series. And then the Daniel Craigs are the new ones to me. That's just how I do it. I don't care how other people do it. That's my system. So James Bond becomes a double O agent. He gets his license to kill status. He goes on a mission. He goes after this guy. He's supposed to bring this guy in. The guy dies. Bond is kind of in trouble for that, and he's put on assignment to bring down this financer for a terrorism group. They want to bring him down. They want to bankrupt him so he could stop doing what he's doing. They try to get at him. It kind of works, and then he is going to enter this high-stakes poker game to win all this money back and keep doing what he wants to do. So Bond goes undercover with a... British Treasury agent, who is the Bond girl in this one, and they are going to win the game and take all the money and stop this guy. All these different twists and turns happen. Bond's fighting people, and then he gets poisoned, and this happens, and that happens. He loses all the money. He gets the money back. They do a flip and everything, and the guy finds out, kidnaps Bond, but they get away, and they get the money. Bond gives the money to the girl. You find out this was all a setup from the beginning. Tries to save the girl. She dies. He wants revenge. That's how the movie ends. And then it kind of flows into Quantum of Solace. So that's it. Um, you know, again, kind of going back to the basics with Bond. I really love the action scenes in this movie. From the opening where he fights the dude in the bathroom to the parkour stuff. To flipping over the Aston Martin to the ending and everything in between. I really enjoyed the action scenes of this movie. Again, you have Martin Campbell, the guy that did Goldeneye, one of the best James Bond movies, one of my favorite James Bond movies. The guy knows what he's doing. In the meantime, he did Mask of Zorro, which I love. Before that, he did No Escape, which is a really underrated movie. So Martin Campbell knew what he was doing. He was, I think, one of the best people for the job in terms of James Bond movies. Daniel Craig does great. I really enjoyed Daniel Craig in this movie. He's basically Timothy Dalton. So, yeah. You know, I really enjoy his performance. This actually has one of my favorite Bond lines, which is the whole world's going to die knowing you were scratching my balls, which is great. But Daniel Craig is a very good James Bond. I, I don't think he's the best James Bond, but a lot of people do, and that's their opinion. But, you know, again, you have to be a good actor. To play James Bond. And Daniel Craig knocks it out of the park. Unfortunately, again, he has more bad movies than good movies. But, you know, even in the bad ones, I think he does fine. 
you know, he does he does his job as James Bond. Um, I have this on Blu-ray. I just forgot to bring it. Uh, I have the 50, 50th anniversary Bond set, and then I also have the original Blu-ray. The reason why is because the original Blu-ray had features which never made it to the Bond 50th anniversary set. So if you're trying to get all the features for this movie and you have one of the Bond box sets, you have to track down the original Blu-ray release as well because that has all the original features. Just heads up for people. Um, again, it was nice to see Judy Dench come back as M, even though it doesn't really make sense because this is supposed to be a reboot, but I liked how they kept her in there. Ava Green is one of my absolute favorite Bond girls, a absolutely breathtaking, beautiful, gorgeous woman. She's French. I won't hold it against her, but Ava Green is just absolutely stunning. Um, it's a shame that her character dies, spoiler alert, because it would have been nice if she was in some more of these Bond movies. But Ava Green is to die for. Um, Mads Mikkelsen is great as the villain in this film. I really enjoy his performance. Jeffrey Wright, great actor as Felix. John Carla Giannini is in this, another actor I've always enjoyed. There's a really solid cast in this film. And I do like the story. The story is intriguing. It's a little more suspenseful. It's a little more cat and mouse, but I think the movie's too long. I remember when this first came out on DVD, I think my mom got it for me for Christmas or something. And I looked at the runtime. I'm like, oh boy, we have another On Her Majesty's Secret Service here. Because On Her Majesty's Secret Service is the longest out of the original, which is like two hours and 20 minutes. And this is like two hours and 25 minutes. So this movie is really long. There is a lot of parts of this movie that are really, really slow. I don't know why they went that route, but they could have tightened the movie up. They could have cut some stuff. They could have sped it up a little bit. The movie's definitely about 20 minutes too long. You know, when there's action, when there's something going on, it's there. But a lot of the slower parts, it's like, okay. And even though I really enjoyed this movie... You know, it's a great debut for Daniel Craig. I have to be in the right mood to watch this one. I really do. Because it's just so damn long. And it's like, okay, all right. They're playing cards. All right, yep. You got a 10. All right, cool, you win. And then Bond goes and fights this guy. And he comes back. Oh, you got a 12. Okay, I know it's not Blackjack, but you know what I'm saying. So this movie definitely could have been tightened up a little bit. But when there's action, when they're moving the plot along, that stuff's good, but it's just the in-between, the slower stuff. It's like, okay, I get it. It's supposed to be the new, the first new one, and you're building it up, but a lot of that stuff could have been cut down, and a lot of stuff could have been sped up, and they could have got quicker to where they needed to go, but I get why they did it. But it does kind of hurt the movie a little bit for me because, you know, it didn't need to be, you know, almost two and a half hours. It did not. And the next movie is like the shortest Bond movie. And then Skyfall is about two hours, but Skyfall cuts a little bit quicker. Spectre, I think, is a little bit over two hours. That one kind of cuts at a little bit of a, a, a good pace, but it's not that good of a movie in my opinion. Just me. But you know how it goes. And I love the theme song. I love the song You Know My Name by Chris Cornell. Of course, the singer from Soundgarden. May he rest in peace. One of my favorite Bond songs. Um, good stuff. But at the end of the day, again, I do really enjoy this film. I think it's a good debut for Daniel Craig. For the first new one, I think it's good. You know, would I put this in top 10? Maybe an honorable mention. I don't think I would ever put this in my top 10 favorite Bond movies. And again, it's not my favorite Daniel Craig movie. That's definitely Skyfall. Skyfall is excellent, and I cannot wait to talk about that film. But this is a pretty good movie. Again, out of the five that, out of the four that I've seen with Daniel Craig, I like the first one, and I like the third one. That's it. Um, it's just the way that it goes. The rest are kind of, eh, to be honest. But again, that's just the way that it is sometimes. Sometimes you get some really good Bond movies. And then sometimes you don't. 
like Pierce Brosnan. Pierce Brosnan had two really good ones and two not so good ones. Um, Roger Moore had five really good ones and two not so good ones. Timothy Dalton were all good. Sean Connery, the official ones were all good. So yeah, it's just the way that it goes sometimes. As I keep saying, I don't know why I'm repeating myself. Repeating myself. <sighs> anyway, I'm just playing. But I do like Casino Royale quite a bit. Again, I gotta be in the right mood to watch it. Because it's just so fucking long. You know? But it's just the way that they made the movie. But oh well. So anyway, I hope that you guys enjoyed my review of Casino Royale. Next up, we will be talking about Quantum of Solace. Which again, I do not really remember anything about this movie except the first action scene. So this should be interesting to get through with you guys. But anyway, take care. We will talk soon. See you.